Hi everybody and welcome to Skip's Tips for Flute on YouTube. Thank you all very much for joining in, for having a look at what I have to say here, and please do subscribe if you like what you hear today because there will be a lot more of these in the future. Now there is a written explanation of the Skip's Tip and what I'm going to do now is present in video format by following along with the, uh, the printed format exactly how to do what I'm explaining on the page. So excuse me, I'm an old man, I need my spectacles. So welcome to my series of tips for playing music on flutes, fifes, and whistles. These methods are the ones I've developed and practiced to this day, that's true. They've worked for me, at least some people think so. And with practice, they will work for you too, I know they will. If it worked for me, they'll work for you. There's nothing special about me. When I started playing the fife, it took me over a year to learn Yankee Doodle. I like to break things down, which means to deconstruct, to their basic points, which is what this first lesson is about. To play these kinds of instruments, and I mean fifes, flutes, penny whistles, piccolos, any kind of transverse or inverse instrument, these tips apply equally to all of them. We have to learn and practice these four basic things. If they're all in balance, your playing will be two. If they are not, then you're going to have a problem and you'll have to figure out which of these four points is not in sync with the others. Okay? Pretty basic. Number one, air in. We're playing wind instruments. No wind, no sound. It is pretty basic. You should open your mouth when you breathe, relax your throat, and pull air in with your diaphragm. Much like when you're taking a drink, if you're thirsty, you take a drink of something to quench your thirst. What we need to do here is fill our lungs, not just our throat, with air so we can play whatever passage is coming next. I always say I like to dominate with the air I have in reserve the passage I am about to try to play. Okay? Never be afraid of taking as much air as you can. That is the point of this first step. Now, to breathe, we want to use our diaphragm. That's the muscle down here underneath our belly, and that muscle moves in and out. That's what helps us pull air into our lungs. When you breathe, your shoulders should not move. Your shoulders should stay down, and you should get a very deep sound when you pull air in, like this. See, my shoulders are not moving at all, right? My shoulders are staying square. We want to have kind of a square or think of it as a triangle with your two lungs leading down to the diaphragm, okay? So your shoulders should not move. <sighs> Watch any great player. Their shoulders never move when they breathe. You want to relax your throat. If you have your throat tight, <laughs> you hear that. <laughs> If you're trying to play the flute and you take a breath and you're hearing a sound like that, you're barely filling your throat with air. You're getting nothing down into your lungs. It's like if you put gas into your car. Your mouth, that's where the nozzle goes. The throat is going to be the fuel line. Your lungs are the fuel tanks. That's where the air goes. Okay? So, very deep sound. <gasps> Shoulders aren't moving, none of this kind of stuff. Stay nice and square. This is giving you every advantage to be able to store a lot of air. Okay? Point one, air in. Point two, air out. Makes sense, huh? Now that our lungs are full of air, we need to deliver this fuel to our instrument. And since this is tips for flute, today I'll be showing on flute. Push with your diaphragm, your belly, and control the outflow of air with your embouchure, your lips. 
That's where we're doing all of the fine tuning of the notes. Amateur gets a little higher, harder when we're playing higher notes, a little bit looser when we're trying to play low notes. This is really the carburetor. That's the regulator of all of the fuel we're about to put into the engine. We're largely a storage tank here and a regulator of the fuel going into the engine to do a little car talk kind of thing. When you blow out, blow out. Don't worry about trying to save air. At this point, we still have a little bit of air left on planet Earth. I don't think you're going to suck it all in with one breath. Okay? Take the air in. Get rid of what you have so you can then get more air. I'm busy. That's what happens when you don't turn your phone off. But we're going to keep going through it because it's going to stop now. Told you it would stop. So, when you're breathing out, a very important thing to remember is we're in the business of making sound, creating sound. Don't be shocked when noise actually comes out of your flute, fife, whistle, piccolo, whatever you're blowing into. That's the idea. We're trying to make sound. I always stress make a big a sound as you can in the beginning, and then we look at controlling and regulating the sound from there. Don't try to do too many things at once. First, learn to make a big sound, then we're gonna learn how to control the sound. Okay, so when you blow out, again, it's important to keep your throat relaxed and open, and your shoulders square. I know there are a lot of people who play the flute like this. There are some phenomenally good flute players that play the flute like that. I'm not a fan of that. If you play like that, I'm not saying anything bad about you. I'm saying me personally, and you're here listening to my ideas, so this is my idea. Everything lines up much better like this, okay? We're not crimping around, you're not getting this sore part over here in the side of your neck, nice and square. You breathe in, you blow out. So I'm pushing from down here. And you hear how the sound is nice and even. That's what you're trying to get, not being a little bit afraid about blowing air out at that point. Don't be afraid, okay? Air in, air out. Air in, air out. G, three fingers down, is our friend. It's a really good note to play on your flute, fife, piccolo, whistle, okay? Half of the holes are open, half of the holes are closed. The flute, fife, piccolo is gonna respond really well to a G note. I stress a lot of times starting these exercises around on a G. Okay? Next, number three, finger up. Sounds pretty easy. No, it isn't. I always say to explode your finger up from the instrument and be sure to clear the tone hole by a quarter inch or so. That's minimal level. Okay? At least about that high over the instrument. Any lower, the notes will be flat. Much higher, you may miss the tone hole when you bring the finger back down. So we want to, when you lift your finger up, if I'm playing now an F sharp, and I want to play a G, I don't just peel lazily the finger off. I pull the finger up, and I try to move really straight up and down over the holes. <laughs> Now you hear when that note changes from the F sharp to the G, that G really has an edge on it. It really has a corner on it. That's because I'm making a very good pressure change from these two holes being open on the bottom to now three holes being open on the bottom. I'm not giving this flute 
any chance to give me anything other than what I want. I want a G. I'm making a dynamic move with my finger. I'm blowing full with my air. This has no choice then but to give me the G note that I want. And I'm blowing very steadily, so I have a nice smooth sound when I'm playing that note. Okay, finger up, finger down. Now we need to close the tone holes to create the tone we want. I also say it is very important, and I'm not kidding, this is hugely important, to let the instrument stop the movement of your finger. Don't try to guess, oh, it's about that far to the flute. Your finger is going to slow down. It's going to kind of be guessing where the flute is. And when you do that, this doesn't know what you're trying to tell it. You got to be the boss. You got to tell this thing what you want. You got to make it happen. If you wish, how many times do you wish for something and it doesn't happen? More times than you wish for something and it does happen. Don't wish for notes. Make notes. You're the boss. This works for you. You don't work for it. Okay? You have to take that attitude. You have to be the boss. You have to make it happen or it will not happen. Okay? Very easy. Let the, mo let the instrument stop the motion of your finger so you create a dynamic seal on the hole. Don't try to guess where the instrument is. Your finger will slow down, and then you don't seal the hole well, and the note will not speak. The same way we explode the finger up, and we get that really nice second note. Same thing when we put the finger down. You can hear when you listen to players like Matt Malloy, any of the great, really dynamic players, you hear their fingers hitting the flute. I mean, you can hear the... You hear the note when you close the holes. That's what you want. Again, we're not giving the flute any, any chance of doing what it wants to do. It's going to do what we want it to do. You're the boss. Be the boss. Okay? Remember with the finger movements that what we're trying to do is to create this different air pressures that I was talking about inside the instrument. And those air pressures we're hearing out here from the embouchure hole, not out here from the end of the and from the end of the flute. The more sudden and dynamic these air pressure changes are, the better the response and the better tone that you'll create on your instrument. Now, there's a, a practice that I can suggest, the suggested exercise to learn to develop the movement of your diaphragm. And it's more that you can identify exactly where this muscle is, because we use it all day long, and for the most part, we don't even realize it's there. If you take a belt, put it across your chest, tighten it just so it's just so it's firm. Not 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 we're no fifty shades of flute gray here. I mean we're just taking it easy. We want to just restrict the movement, the inflation of our lungs a little bit. Open your mouth, do the inhalation exercise. That is going to isolate this diaphragm muscle a little bit. You're going to feel that. You should be able to see your belly come out a little bit. That's the movement of the, of the diaphragm. Blow that air out. You want to maybe play for about two beats, four beats, whatever you can. So air in. We're going to play on a G note, our friend and blow out. Repeat that four times. Now remember, we want to get rid of the air. You're not worried about saving air here. We want to take it in and push it out. We're just practicing air exchange here and trying to learn a little bit about isolating that diaphragm muscle. So remember these four points. They are the ground points of everything you are ever going to play on your flute, your fife, your whistle, your piccolo, your whatever you happen to be blowing on at the moment. Okay? Learn those four points. Master those four points. You are the boss. 
You play music or music will play you. It is a death match. There is a winner. And I want it to be you. Okay? I hope you enjoyed that. Be back soon with the next Skips tip. As always, go home and practice. Cheers, everybody.